years ago, and I mean years ago, I used to do lighting. Yeah, I, I, I ran a lighting company. I loved doing rock and roll shows, and one of my best customers was Big Head Todd. I remember watching them up at CU on the uh, Friday Afternoon Club on the UMC Terrace. I was at Student Unit. It was, it was a hoot. Since then, I haven't watched music in Denver for a long time. So, David Barber here is going to tell me all about it. David, thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. All right, I want to talk to you. You've got a great little book coming out. It's called Gigging. Gigging, what? everything you need to know about playing gigs except how to play your axe. An axe is a guitar. Your axe, yeah. Unless it's a real axe and then it's, it's a yeah, it's problem. Yeah, I don't problem. teach anything about that. All right. <laughs> All right, so you've been, you've been around in the, in the music scene for a while. In what yeah. capacity? I'm, I'm thinking you're kind of one of those guys in the trenches of local music. Would I, would well, I be right? I started out... Um, we know when I was 21, just going out and hanging out and watching the bands. I remember watching Big Head Todd a lot when he was playing locally a lot. Um, and then over the years, uh, I just wanted to become more involved. Uh, at this point, I, I worked the door at Herman Sideway. Worked the door at Herman Sideway. How many, how many fake IDs did you capture? Uh, as many as possible. But <laughs> there's, there's actually not that many that All come right. through. Somebody's working the door. You want to get in. But you don't have a ticket. What's the best way to get through the door with with a guy like you at, at it? Any uh, local venue. Money. What what does it take? If I if if you're working the door, Herman's Hideaway, great old dive. Now, are, by the are, way. are you are you? Well, actually, it's not, it's not a big a dive as it used to be. It well, used to be a bigger. hell of a dive. I mean, it was. It's, it's nice now. Oh, it was. It was a great place <laughs> to see live music. But let's face yeah. it, it was a dive. It was a it's, beer hall dive. It certainly was. All right. So I'm just curious. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, this is not a trick question, but. So you're going up there, you want to get in, your favorite band's playing, no, no, we're at capacity. Oh, okay. You, you slide, slide the, the Bouncer 20, is that enough to get in? No. Come on, how much? Uh, I, you know, Come I don't, on. I don't, I don't, Come on, I don't take you the, I don't take the bribe. It's got to be so much that uh, I, I couldn't possibly say no, and, and I've got to split it with three other guys, so. All right. Uh, triple that. We'll talk afterwards. <laughs> does, does Denver still have, or did it ever have, a good local music scene? It's now, better now than it ever was. I mean, really, back when Big Head Todd was playing, it was tough. Bands would move away if they wanted to succeed. I, I remember groups like the Subdudes up in Fort Collins. Sure, the a great band. Right. And so they went to New Orleans for a while to... to That's to actually where they were from. They moved right. to Fort Collins and got big somehow. And they got a big record and then they... they yeah. you know, all right, but I remember, you know, there were, in Boulder, where I did a lot of work, you had, you had a few great clubs. And right. they would, you know, you, you, they play at, oh, good God, I'm trying to think. <laughs> uh, you know, the Beer Hall, they play at the Walrus, and they, they yeah. play at the Boulder Theater, and then the Fox Theater. And then, you know, they, they, they get, get big. In Denver, if, a, if you want to see good local music, what, what are the top three places that always have good local bands? Well, Herman's is primarily local. And, and if you're going to headline at Herman's, you've got to be pretty good. You got to be able to fill that room, and that's that's a how many people? How many people in that that room? The capacity is 500. Really? So you got to fill 500. Well, you know, you yeah. don't have to fill every seat, but you know, you've got to you got to bring in 100 or two, or you're not going to headline. Uh, other places to go that are really good rooms: the Gothic Theater. It's just a beautiful, swanky place. That's up um, on Colfax, right? No, no, no. That's the on Gothic Broadway. Is down on South Broadway. That's right. Just over the line into uh, Englewood. Got it. Uh, the Bluebird Theater is also another good one. It's a little smaller, but that one's on Colfax, and uh, they there's, do a lot of local stuff. There's the too. Ogden and the Ogden Theater. That one's bigger to the point where they're doing mostly national acts All now. Right. And of course, then there's uh, the um, uh, used to be the oh, what is it right on Clarkson? I'm blanking out. Fillmore. The Fillmore. Yeah. The Fillmore, but that's more for big national acts. Yeah, that's coming. that's for huge stuff. Right. If and I, I remember lots of little local acts you know yeah. and, and they remember the fornicators and other oh, just yeah. great cover bands and these were right. good good bands they were who's big right now you're, you're who's, who's bopping around in denver that that will sell out a place like herman's uh the rail benders can always do it um p knuckles always been good uh, for years and years they've been doing good if you like reggae there's lion soldiers um it kind of just depends on what genre you want there's there's hundreds and hundreds of bands in the Denver metro area um, and there's new ones popping up all the time it, it's it never ceases to amaze me now I remember from the day that bands get paid 
basically crap and that it's 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 a nice way for them to occasionally get some free beer and if they're doing it right they're making enough money to pay buying their next new guitar if they're, if if they're doing okay let, let me let me give you a story it's, it's it's my job to pay the bands at Herman Sideway at the end of the night I don't usually determine you know ahead of time what that's going to be I, I get told pay them this amount or pay based 28 on whatever right. usually it depends on how many people come in but in one week I pay the band as little as $20 and as much as $5,000. <laughs> and it depends, you know, how many people came to see them and what kind of deal they worked out ahead of time. All right, who, you know? who, who got the 20 bucks? Uh, a lot of bands. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't even who, remember who got, bands that I get 20 who, bucks. Who got the five grand? The five grand, that was the Mercury Project. And it was a, a CD release show and they had worked out a, a killer deal for themselves. Um, and and they, they fill the room. And most of these places, most of the, the concert halls, these small places, they make their money selling booze. Absolutely. Every, that's, it, well, that's, no matter how big it is, if it's, if it's Red Rocks or, or the High Dive, they make their money selling beer or, or alcohol. All right. So, so if, if, if you're not a boozer, you're not making them any money. That's right. That's right. So you've got to go with it, buy a beer and then, then there's, spill it. There's nothing worse than the kid who comes in the door and says he's under 21. Well, can't you just let me in? I won't drink. It's like, well, why? Why would we well, let you in? There's even you less got... reason to let you in now. <laughs> the, if the bands that start, I, I, a lot of these bands start in college. I remember up in, yeah. up in Boulder, you know, my day it was Big Head Todd, it was The Samples, there was a group yeah. called The Feds. There were, you know, and the samples are still around, more or less. Right, more or less. <laughs> and you know, some, of them, some of them rarely would hook on and actually get, uh, get staying power. I think of somebody like Chris Daniels and the Kings. Yep. You know, one, of the, one of the great local uh, uh, bands that, that works hard sure. and, and has always been around. I, always this would be a roadhouse. I mean, it's, I would call Chris Daniels a roadhouse band. Right. Yeah. I, I, would, I would agree with that. So these guys, some of them would stick around because they had the chops and the patience to do it. Most of them just, just fall apart. It's true. Uh, hardly any bands last more than a few years. Um, it, there are a few. Um, you know, Hazel Miller's playing uh, again. Hey, she is. Yeah. yeah. She's got a band together and she's out gigging. Hazel Miller has, has, has pipes that, when she sings, she literally just picks you up, throws you up against the wall. <laughs> That's it's, a great way to put it. You, know, you, you have no choice but to be victimized by, by the power of her voice. And, and, and you're going to enjoy being yeah, thrown against she, the wall she by sla her. She slaps you around. It's, it's, and she'll, and do it incredible. Incredible. <laughs> and she'll do it with a smile. And you'll love every minute of it, I'll tell you. Absolutely. All right, so if a band's trying to get their way going in, in a town like Denver, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm playing my garage band. We, we put together our own little cheesy demo CD. Back in my day, it was a cassette tape, but you, know, you, yeah. you got it. Same thing. How do you get, how do you get into, into a bar? How do you, how do well, you make that first, that first step? It's, it's actually pretty easy because there's, there's so many clubs and just bars in Denver that are booking live music right now. That per capita, we have more in Denver than they have in L.A. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we got more music halls, more bars with live music. We've got more, more, more music of a venues. music scene per capita than L.A. Yeah, which is astounding, but that's, that's what that's I've heard. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, all you got to do is, is take your, your, your demo CD, and actually, you don't even need that anymore. The booking guys, they don't want CDs. They don't want promo packs. They want uh, something online. You know, it could be Reverb Nation. It could be Bandcamp. It could be an actual real website, which is usually the best. But they want to hear a song. They want to read a description of uh, what kind of music you're playing. You know, is it reggae? Is it blues? Is it rock? What is it? Even make something up if you have to. Um, they want to, if you haven't played out before, a lot of clubs, like Herman's has a Wednesday night. We call it New Talent Showcase. It's basically an audition night. We'll let anybody who's got a band get up there and give it a shot. And we'll say, okay, how many people came to see them? And how good did they sound? And if, if they sounded good and they brought some people, we'll give them another gig. And, you know, you slowly work your way up to the headlining slots. I remember my, my days, and, and again, I was on the periphery of this. I pro mm -hmm. Like the guy who provided the sound system, I provided the lights. And, and I did right. m larger concerts. But, you know, in, in the larger the concert, the more slimy everyone is. That you had agents, you had promoters, you had the guy who represented the venue that you're in. And at the end of the night, they put this big pile of money together, and they try to figure out and who gets what. It's and everybody settling. takes their share first, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's called settling up. And then afterwards, if there's anything left, you, you, know, you, well, you buy well, a round of drinks. Every, every venue is different and every show is different. But generally speaking, um, you need to work that stuff out ahead of time. You need to know when you, when you book the gig, you know, say, what are we going to get paid? And 
you want an, a, either a guarantee of they're going to pay us 300 bucks or, or whatever it is, or they're going to, it's going to depend on a lot of venues like Herman's will say, well, it's going to depend on how many tickets come in uh, that, that you, what we do is we hand out, give discount tickets to the band. Every band has a different color and everybody who brings one of those in gets in at a discounted price and we tear off the stub and we know, okay, here's the red tickets, here's the yellow tickets, here's the green tickets. We know which band brought in how many Oh, people. really? Yeah, it's very simple. So no, basically, rock and roll has turned from peace, love, and happiness to, to a multi-level marketing it, scheme like Amway in that it, you, you, you have to show me the money. If you want to get started, you need to go over and say, yeah, we can bring in 300 people into your bar. But, but don't say that if you can't. Right. And then you've got to... Uh, beg grandma to come and and and, and show up and, and so they have the ticket hey, stub. If if nobody comes to see your band, whether it's it's free or not, there you know there's no money at the door, uh, and usually the door money is what's used to pay the bands these days. They don't pay them out of the bar anymore. Uh, they used to do that. Um, the, the cricket on the hill used to give like ten or twenty percent of whatever came into the at the bar to the bands. Um, so in other words, if you had three really good alcoholic bingers, you could make a lot of money as a band. You, you can, and, but there again, you still need to bring in people who are gonna drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going back in time. Back in the day, we had these guys called record agents that used to come in and hang around and listen to bands. They were kind of like the guys who went down to the baseball farm leagues and see who was pitching well to see who might want to get bumped up. Right. So, oh, this guy's from Atlantic, and this guy's from Warner Brothers, and everybody's kissing their ass. <laughs> I'm assuming that's all gone as that, well. That is all gone. Um, the major labels have consolidated. There's only like three or four of them left, and they don't sign anybody who hasn't already sold or they don't think is going to sell millions of records. You know, if, if selling 100,000 is no good, that's, that's not profitable enough for them anymore. So you, actually most bands are better off just staying independent, staying unsigned and doing their own thing and gigging around and not having to give the record company 50% of their profit. Here's the new reality in live music. Tell me if I'm wrong on this that you're going to have a few prefab groups out there that, There's always that, are, going to be those. that are going to make a gazillion dollars, they're going to, they're going to hook up with the big companies, and, and they're, going to, they're going to be fine. But if you're going to make some money as a musician, it's not going to be through record sales. It's going to be through live concerts. You're not going to, you, people will be able to download your music. You're, it's going to be passed around. So if you want to make money as a local musician or as a big rock star, you better learn how to work it and sell the house. Absolutely. I, I agree with you 100%. Right now, it's all about the live performance. That's where you're going to sell your merch, sell your CDs, and and get paid based on the on the tickets. Because you know, I want to work in an industry where you can say words like merch. That's that's really <laughs> my my goal. David, thank you. If you want to check out this book, it's great. Go to giggingbook.com. That's giggingbook.com. Thank you so much. Listen for me on Sunday afternoons at 6.30 KHOW. Tell a friend about the Independence Institute. You can check us out at independenceinstitute.org. Tell a friend, and we'll see you next week.